Welcome back to Nysoi YouTube channel. In this video we're going to talk about why is it so difficult to obtain good international analgesia in patients having total knee replacement. Well, here's why. The innervation of the knee is complex, intricate. The innervation for the anterior aspect of the knee is primarily composed of branches from the lumbar plexus, particularly the femoral nerve. However, there are still areas, especially on the anterolateral aspect, that are innervated also both by lumbar plexus and the common peroneal nerve, which is the component of the sciatic nerve. The innervation of the posterior aspect of the knee is somewhat less complex because most of it comes from the sciatic nerve, with the exception of some parts innervated by the obturator nerve from the lumbar plexus. So these are the two key points. Number one, the innervation of the knee is very complex. There are numerous nerves to anesthetize if you want to tackle these nerves using a distal approach. Number two, if you take the proximal approach, to block the femoral nerve and the sciatic nerve, you basically can achieve a complete anesthesia of the knee. However, this also results in a loss of the motor strength and the ability to ambulate because the cordyceps and hamstring muscles will be blocked as well. Now you see the challenges. You are between a rock and a hard place. It is difficult to balance effective pain relief while maintaining muscle function for mobility. Now get this, the adductor canal block only blocks the saphenous nerve, but when you consider the complex innervation of the knee, it becomes quite clear why the adductor canal block isn't a very powerful technique for analgesia after total knee replacement. It simply blocks a few minor branches that contribute innervation to the knee, as opposed to the more proximal approaches such as the femoral triangle block or the femoral neural blocks which we will discuss in a little bit. In an interesting paper in Regional Anesthesia and Pain Medicine entitled The Optimal Analgesic Block for Total Knee Arthroplasty, Drs. Benson and Morigal and their team took an innovative approach. They analyzed different surgical incisions or dissections during knee arthroplasty that matched those anatomical areas with the tissues being affected and then explained their findings. It is an interesting and academic approach where they match the injured tissues with the nerves, distal nerves that you need to block in order to accomplish analgesia. However, it is simply not practical for clinicians to retain this detailed anatomical knowledge and recollect it during interventions to choose specific distal nerve block techniques. A much better and more pragmatic approach is to devise standard techniques for interventional analgesia for common operations and have the entire regional anesthesia team use the same approach. Let's now discuss the interventional analgesia options that we have for the anterior aspect of the knee. Let's start with the femoral nerve block. This block is less commonly used today because it results in muscle weakness for the duration of the block, therefore affecting the cordyceps muscles and making ambulation difficult. However, for patients who are not expected to ambulate, such as those undergoing reoperations or those with a high body mass index or patients with traumatic knee injuries, the femoral nerve block is the most powerful analgesic intervention for the anterior aspect of the knee. After all, there are plenty of operations you can perform with the femoral nerve block alone, such as patella fracture repair, cordyceps tendon repair, but there are no interventions you can perform with an adductor canal block. While the femoral nerve block may not be the best option for ambulatory surgery patients who are expected to walk soon after their knee replacement, it still remains the most powerful analgesic technique. Keep it in mind as an option for patients where postoperative analgesia is a priority. Once we move away from the main trunk of the femoral nerve at the inguinal fossa, you can see how quickly the femoral nerve sends its branches to the cordyceps muscles. By the time you get to the femoral triangle or to the adductor canal, nearly all motor branches have already innervated the muscles. Therefore, if you descend to the femoral triangle or the adductor canal, you primarily have the saphenous nerve in the branch to the vastus medialis in the triangle 
and the saphenous nerve in the adductor canal only. And because the adductor canal block only blocks the saphenous nerve, while the femoral triangle block also blocks the important branch of the femoral nerve that innervates the knee, which is the vastus medialis branch, we routinely use the femoral triangle block at Nysora instead of the adductor canal block for optimal analgesia. And there you have it. Our standard block for analgesia after total knee replacement at Nysora is the femoral triangle block. But in the next video, we will cover exactly how to perform this technique. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the notification button so you don't miss our next video, which will focus on the femoral triangle block and how to maximize your interventional analgesia techniques for patients having total knee arthroplasty. Until next time.